Good morning and welcome to This Week. A This Week exclusive. Gabby Giffords deserves a vote. The families of Newtown deserve a vote. After Obama's appeal on guns, immigration, and the minimum wage, how will Republicans respond? We'll ask Congressman Paul Ryan here live only on this week. Plus, how is President Obama going to get any of this out of Congress? White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough is here. Then, the debate time for Senator Hagel is not yet over. Hagel on hold and laid out tonight. Was this really a big deal? Don't worry, Senator Rubio. Nobody noticed that you gave a speech. Our powerhouse roundtable takes on all the week's politics. George Will, Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, Ruth Marcus from the Washington Post, and former Romney advisor Stuart Stevens. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. Reporting from the Museum in Washington, Chief White House Correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Hello again, George is off today. It's great to have you with us. In a This Week exclusive, Congressman Paul Ryan is standing by to join us live. But first, a major political story breaking overnight. A new report from USA Today with what the paper says is a draft of the White House immigration proposal. According to the report, the plan includes allowing undocumented immigrants to apply for legal status with a pathway to citizenship after eight years. It also expands E-Verify and border security. Joining us now to talk about this is the new White House Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, now, uh, this <clears throat> hit with a thud as far as Marco Rubio is concerned. He said late last night in a statement, quote, this legislation is half-baked and seriously flawed. It would actually make our immigration problems worse. If actually proposed, the president's bill would be dead on arrival in Congress, leaving us with unsecured borders and broken immigra legal immigration system for years to come. Let's be honest, there is no passing an immigration bill without Marco Rubio. How could the White House be working on a draft without Republican input? John, you know, the president has always approached this question of immigration reform from four principles. One, let's make sure that the border is secure. Two, let's make sure that we enforce on businesses who are gaming the system, uh, enforce their requirements to live up to the law. Three, make sure that we are reforming legal immigration so that we can use it uh, to make sure that uh, those who have come here legally have a reasonable option. And we've not proposed anything to, to Capitol Hill yet. We've got a bill. We're doing exactly what the president said we would do last month in Las Vegas, which is we're preparing. We're going to be ready. Uh, we have developed each of these proposals, so we have them in a position so that we can succeed. Because the fact of the matter is, John, as you know as well as I do, going back to 2001, this has been a priority for many Congresses. So let's make sure that they get this thing done. Uh, and they're up there working on it right now. Senator Rubio, uh, Senator uh, Durbin, Senator Schumer, and others. And let's see how they do, and we'll be ready to work but, with them. But back to my question here, which is how could the White House be working on a draft, even if it's a White House draft, without at least talking to Republicans about it? I mean, has the president even met with Marco Rubio yet on immigration? Well, we, we're talking with all the uh, parties to the Gang of Eight effort in the Senate, uh, John. He, he and says there's been no consultation. We've been working with all the members in, up there. We have our, our staff working this very aggressively with their staffs and with the members. And we're working this very aggressively, as you think we would, with such a high priority for the country. This immigration system is broken. Border security, we've made great progress for the last four years. We want to build on that. And we're going to continue with, uh, to work with Senator Rubio and others on this. But... He says it's dead on arrival if it's proposed. Well, let's make sure that it doesn't have to be proposed. Let's make sure that that group up there, the Gang of Eight, makes the good progress on these efforts uh, as much as they say they want to. And that's exactly what we intend to do, to but, work but, with them. But what do you say to Marco Rubio on this? I mean, he's saying half-baked, uh, uh, flawed. Uh, wh what do you say to him? How do you do some damage control on this? Well, I'm not going to get in engaged in a kind of a back and forth as is kind of op often the practice here in Washington, a big kind of political scrum, even before we've had actual proposal of... It's uh, already here. I mean, he started it, right? I well, mean, look, I'm not going to engage, as I said, in some kind of back and forth. What I am going to do is make sure that our team is doing exactly what the president has demanded us uh, to do and what he said to the country in the State of Un the Union the other night, which is... We have to make progress on immigration reform. We should enact this this year, and the president will continue to work with the team to make sure that happens. 
Okay, I want to move to the other big battle you have coming up right now with Congress, this, the so-called sequester, these automatic spending cuts. We've heard some dire warnings about what they would mean. Uh, we've heard 70,000 kids kicked off Head Start, the equivalent of 1,000 FBI agents off the job, the Navy sh uh, shutting down four air wings, uh, delaying the deployment of a carrier strike group to the Persian Gulf, and uh, we've had a senator talk about five-hour wait times at airports if these cuts go into effect. So tell me, straight with me, how bad will it be if this happens? Well, you didn't even raise the thing that uh, concerns the president most about the sequester, which is we've seen pretty good economic uh, activity over the course of the last several months. The housing market is healing. The uh, stock market is coming back. You've seen uh, consumer confidence uh, re restored. So the lens through which the president looks at this fight John, is a lens that says, are we doing everything we can in this country to strengthen middle class families? That's how our, co our country, our economy is strongest, when a thriving, rising middle class is the engine for growth in this economy. That's exactly what we want to do. When you look at sequester, the impacts on middle class families, what's it going to be? Teachers in schools, 13,000 schools are going to be, 13,000 teachers are going to be hit, 6,000 schools. If you look at mental health, if you look at um, food inspections. And you've already heard the, the devastating list of horribles that the Pentagon so, has said are so, going to be out there. So the question is, on top of all those things that you just talked about, is what is the impact on the middle class? So the, questions, the question the president is asking is, why don't we take a step back, let's fix this in the kind of balanced way the president has proposed and the Senate Democrats have proposed with a reasonable amount of spending cuts and a reason, reasonable amount of revenue raisers so that we can get this thing done and move on to the business of the country. But, but help me understand, uh, because we, we have a budget. This is, let's look at exactly what this is. $85 billion this year out of a budget of $3.8 trillion. You can see uh, just a small slice. And then if you look at the sequester over 10 years, we're talking about $1.2 trillion out of $47 trillion in projected government spending. Is it really impossible to find less than 3% of savings in, in, a, in, a, in a federal budget without making those kind of horrible cuts? You know what? It's not impossible, and that's exactly what the president has done over the last year. $2.5 trillion in deficit reduction. He's ready to do another trillion and a half to get up to the $4 trillion target that economists across the country tell us is needed to stabilize the debt over the next 10 years. So that's exactly what the president has done, working with Democrats and Republicans. But you're going to I insist on that, tax increases, right? Well, we're going to insist on doing this in a balanced way. A Which way means that tax increases. We're going to work, insist on doing this in a balanced way a way that allows us to maintain the kinds of investments that middle class families in this country rely on, John. We are just talking about our families, our kids. You know what? We're not going to put at risk the education uh, investments in this country because we can't get together to resolve this in a balanced way. This is not an ideological right. effort, John. This should not be a social science experiment. This should be a question where we ask ourselves, what is most important to the economy? What is most important to the middle class families of this country? And that's the way the president's going to do this. Okay, we're almost out of time. Very too, quickly, two other things. Yeah. Chuck Hagel, the nomination delayed. Uh, also, CIA director, your nominee, uh, John Brennan, looks like he'll be delayed. Is this a, a threat to national security? This is a grave concern. Uh, if you look at Chuck Hagel, decorated war veteran himself, war hero, uh, Republican senator, uh, somebody who over the course of the last many years, either as a Republican senator or as a, the chairman of the president's uh, intelligence advisory board, I've worked with very closely. This guy has one thing in mind. How do we protect the country? But is there a danger of this being delayed? Between John Brennan, a yeah. CIA director, and uh, Chuck Hagel, as secretary of defense, we want to make sure that we have our guy, those guys sitting in the chairs working because I don't want there to have uh, been something missed because of this hang up here in Washington. Okay, and, and very quickly, John Boehner had a very, uh, seemed like a harsh comment directed towards the president saying that, quote, I don't think he has the guts to cut uh, or to deal with the entitlement problem. He doesn't have the courage to take on the liberal side of his own party. Uh, what do you say to Speaker of the House John Boehner? In the State of the Union address on Tuesday night, the President laid out a very detailed plan to get to the $4 trillion in deficit reduction that we need to stabilize debt, grow the economy, strengthen the middle class. Okay. That's exactly what he's done. That takes on his party. It asks Republicans to do a little bit, too. And that's what we're going to continue to do. All right, Dennis McDonough, brand new White House Chief of Staff, thank you for coming here on This Week. Thanks so much for having me, John.